want to share one quick story. Um, I've actually had a, a few classes with Deacon Paul at the seminary, and uh, one, of, one of them, we would, I think we had maybe one or two with Sister Mary together. She taught uh, sacred scripture. And uh, I don't know, it wasn't by design, but we normally sat, I sat right behind Deacon Paul. And so it was two Pauls right next to each other. And whenever Sister Mary would call out Paul, both our heads would shoot up. And I, for me, it was like, I, I liked that spot. And so I just stayed there, but <laughs> there we were. So I'm just so grateful for you and for, for your, your diaconate and for your vocation. All that matters is Jesus. All that matters is what he has done for us. This is what Jesus is saying in our gospel today. That all that matters is Jesus and all that matters is what he has done for us. That he has suffered, that he has died, and that he has risen again. And we see in the very early church, this is what St. Paul is professing, the kerygma. He's saying, this is the very first creed in a sense. He's saying, he, the Nicene Creed hasn't been developed, the one that we pray at Mass every single Sunday. What he is saying is, this is what we believe, that Jesus has suffered and he has died and he has risen from the dead. And because of this, my soul is saved. That's as simple as the message gets. And Jesus today is predicting this kerygma. He's predicting this path of salvation. And the disciples do not yet understand this. And understandably so. You can imagine the disciples probably asking themselves, can Jesus really mean that he will die? And that he will rise three days later? And they're, they're only beginning to know who Jesus is. And they're only getting glimpses of who Jesus is. Is he a prophet? Is he an elevated prophet? Is he God? They're still only getting glimpses of this. So we can, I can, we can definitely sympathize with the disciples for not understanding. They certainly know that Jesus does all these wonderful miracles and that he heals those around him around him and that he teaches about the kingdom of heaven but to die and to rise again that must have been very hard to grasp and so hard for them to grasp that so much so that they, they actually started arguing among themselves and changed the topic well they're probably just saying Jesus this is very confusing to us so let, we're going to talk about who is the greatest among us instead and we can see that the sin of pride creeps in into the lives of the apostles. When who is the, the greatest, that question doesn't even matter. And certainly we, we know that these apostles were very important figures, that they were very important in leaders of our church. And in the creed we say that the four pillars of the church are one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. The church is built on the foundation of the apostles and the bishops that followed. So we know that they did actually receive a place of fame, and yet they got to that place not because they forced themselves in that position, but because, but because of their humility. They realized that Jesus is all that matters, and even that knowing that all, Jesus is all that matters, the one who suffered, died, and rose again, that brought the apostles to their own martyrdom. Brothers and sisters, all that matters is Jesus and what he has done for us. And when we don't recognize this, that all that matters is Jesus and what he has done for us, we can be sure that we'll fall into the same trap as the apostles in our gospel today, that of pride. And what is pride? I think this is a very important question. What is pride? Um, I think there's a good pride, certainly. You know, we have, we're proud to be American. We're proud to be a good mother, father, proud of our children, and so on and so forth. But 
the pride that we're talking about is one of the seven deadly sins, right? It's one of the seven deadly sins. And what is this pride? It's saying that I can do this myself and I do not need to rely on Christ or others. And this is why the sin of Adam and Eve, when we think of the sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that this sin was not primarily a sin of disobedience. Certainly it was disobedience, but primarily it was a sin of pride. Why? Because what Adam and Eve were saying is, we know better. We know better than God, and we can do it ourselves. Brothers and sisters, I remind you, all that matters is Jesus and what he has done for us. And that is why in our gospel, Jesus places a child in their midst. And says, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And just think of that. Think of that moment with the disciples, with Jesus. When you encounter anyone who has the innocence, the vulnerability of a child, there is no place for the sin of pride. There is only a place for the very true sense of love, the love of God and the love of neighbor. And we all remember that these are the two greatest commandments, to love God and to love neighbor as yourself. And the fact is that when we receive our neighbor, the vulnerable, the suffering, the forgotten, the persecuted, we receive Jesus himself. So even loving our neighbor is loving Christ himself. We're going outside of ourselves and loving Christ within the other person. And here there is no place for the sin of pride, but only the love that comes from God. And we've had We've all had experience of this in our own lives, of seeing Christ in other people. And if you haven't, or you feel like you haven't, I'm sure that you have. But if you feel like you haven't had that experience of seeing Christ in other people, then pray for that grace to be able to open your eyes to see Christ in others. Because that's a grace from God, to be able to see, gra- to, to be able to see Christ in others. That love that you see within your spouse, your child, the patient that you work with, your co-worker, your neighbor, the homeless, the persecuted, the suffering, and even a stranger, that love that you see in every single one of those people is a reflection of the love of God. All that matters is Jesus and what he has done for us and what he is doing within us and those around us. So let us pray for a few things today. We pray for the grace to purge the the sin of pride within us and to give us the eyes to see the vulnerable around us and to receive them as Jesus would so that Jesus, who is all that matters, may reign within our hearts.